All right, Bob fans, we got a lot in store today, Bob. Uh, we got the scrimmage from the other day. We have a com big time commitment, a defensive tackle. But we've got to start off with the huge matchup tonight, Sweet 16, the Creighton Blue Jays against your Tennessee Volunteers. Can Rick Barnes get it done in March? We'll find out soon, Tim. Um, you know, uh, his record there is not very good, but, man, I, I think we can beat this team. You know, I, I think we don't have – I mean, we don't have to have nothing special. I think if we – I think we match up good enough with them, I think we can – win this game if we play to our ability and they play out their average game, we play our average game, I think we win this bogey. I'll tell you what, it comes down to really, when you got a team that jacks up as many threes as Creighton does, they're the seventh in the country in the percentage of shots that they put up, which are three-point attempts. If they're on and everything's hitting, you know, it don't matter what you're playing, you're going to the house. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they've scored over – 80 points, like 19 games this year. Uh, been on, in the 90s over half a dozen times. Yeah. Uh, but they've also been in the 40s a couple of times and in the 60s a bunch of times because yeah. when those shots aren't falling, you're getting run out of the gym. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I think um, with our level of defense, we're going to give them problems. I saw some uh, an article by a Creighton writer. Earlier this week, Bob, uh, they talked about he was previewing Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And he had some stats that I had seen before and others that I had not. Right. You know, I mean, our adjusted defense efficiency is number three in the country. I mm -hmm. think we've spoken about that before. Right. Um, our offensive efficiency, 30. You know, not great, not bad. Right. Depends really, you know, once again, sometimes shots fall, sometimes they don't. But, yeah. Um, per 100 possession, possessions, we're giving up 89 points. Uh, which is a very good number. Mm -hmm. But actually, since the NCAA started, it's even been better. I think against St. Pete, we gave up 77. In Texas, we gave up 82. Those are elite numbers. Mm -hmm. So we are dialed in defensively. Um, better be because we're not dialed in recently on the offensive side. We are not. We're, we're in a little bit of a slump. We are. And, and you know, I'm hoping it's – if you look at the, our shooting percentages for the last – like five games, it took a dip. And sure, we've played some tough, decent well, yeah. competition, but some of that competition was Kentucky. Not and Alabama. Over the defense. Not over the defense. Right. So, um, so uh, that that's probably the most concerning thing to well, me. Well, it is. I mean, we shot 12% from three last game, three of 25. Yeah. But I expect a, a bounce back because I don't think we're going to shoot three of 25. Tonight. Yeah. It better not be 225. <laughs> I'm going to throw a brick at you. <laughs> right. But, um, one thing about it, I, I would expect to at least connect. I think he'll go off tonight. I think this matchup is is good one for him. I think this is a tight matchup where he could l light it up. Well, you know, they, they, I believe they foul less than any other team in the country. So I've yeah. seen a lot of people say, hey, let's get them in foul trouble because they don't play many people. It's easier said than done. I'm sure everybody tries to get them in foul trouble. They do, they and they don't. Foul. They don't play a lot of people. I mean, that's probably a. This is an odd team. They, there's several things about them that's like, that's kind of weird. Number one, I ain't had a team a guy foul out all year. Uh, they foul apparently less than anybody in the country. Um, they jack up more three pointers, just about anybody in the country as a percentage of their shots. Yeah. Uh, you know, they there's some different things about them that's a little bit odd. Uh, well, I find it odd, really, that and another thing that you mentioned there is jacking up so many threes, I would think they'd be a good offensive rebounding team because mm -hmm. they get a lot of long, odd rebounds. Yeah. But yet they're not, which is part of the reason they don't foul a lot because they're not aggressive going after offensive rebounds. Hmm. Um, but they, uh, you know, I think Connect's going over 30 tonight. Um, I'd be shocked. One thing, because we didn't foul, I think we talked about it earlier. How many times in these last few games when Connect's been, you know, he's constantly moving, trying to get away from this guy. Yeah. And you see just a handful of jersey, somebody just grabbing and holding for life, just trying to tug him. I don't believe they're going to do that because they're right. taught not to foul. Yeah. I, 
I'll be interested to see how the refs call the game. Uh, I've seen some games in the tournament that was called very closely, and some that basically the refs wasn't going to call anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second half would be to our advantage. If, if the refs uh, decide they're going to call every little knick-knack, yeah. I mean, then we're getting we're get up a lot. Yeah. Um, but I was watching, you know, the game, North Carolina-Alabama uh, game last night, and, uh, you know, refs pretty much wasn't calling nothing in that game. Um, so, to me, that's probably to our advantage, especially since this team don't foul much. I'm thinking they're not really super aggressive at slapping at the ball. Like at people like Adu, you know, we talked about how so how so important for Adu to get a good start. And it seemed like if somebody, you know, blocks him or strips him at, down there near the uh, rim at the beginning of the game two or three times, it stays with him. It gets in his head and he's done. I mean, he's done for the rest of the game. He won't hardly shoot the ball. Uh, but this is a big game for him. This team. Allows they want you to jump uh, to shoot jump shots, mid range jump shots. Well, they do. They they, they um, guard you well out on the perimeter, mm -hmm. and then they got their seven foot one guy who's a rim protector. I think he averages about four blocks a game. So the mid range game though is wide open. So mm -hmm. that, you know, Adu, uh, Triple J, okay. uh, and Connect. Has yeah. to hit that eat that mid range yeah. stuff up tonight. Yeah, I could see Ziegler getting just inside the free throw line and and, and putting it up. Doing a couple little runners. Yeah, I tell you what, he's been tremendous about driving in that range though, and then bounce passing it to one of the bigs. Yeah, once somebody comes out on him. They've got a decent sized team, Creighton, but they do. But I, I'm gonna question how. Their athleticism a little bit. I, I we'll see, but um, well, <laughs> and for any of those people who don't know, they're really white. They looked the college version of uh, Boston Celtics back in the day. Yeah, but and the it, Celtics won though. So they, they won. Yeah. yeah, they played fundamental ball and w played real good. And that's what I'm thinking. Without watching a whole lot of Creighton, yeah. they jack up a lot of threes. They don't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. So w this is the point we talk about. Uh, like a coach on the floor, uh, hard gym work, rat. A gym rat. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Right, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, a couple other things uh, before I move on, and I've, if you need to add anything else too, though, um, that article I had a interesting, one other interesting thing. Um, Zach uh, Zakai there, Averaging 3.3 steals uh, of their opponent's possessions, percentage-wise, um, which is tremendous. Uh -huh. uh, the Balls are the only team in the country that have five guys who have steal rates above 2.5% of the opponent's uh, possessions. Only team in America that's got five guys. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Uh, that is impressive. And I think they could really play against this team right here because, you know, they're gym rats. Right. You know, and, and their coach even mentioned um, the fact that they uh, struggled a little bit against pressure last two games. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to extend them on yeah. on, on offense there. We'll try to get them out of their rhythm. And I hope we. I think there's a real chance since they don't play a lot of people, uh, we tire them out. If we may not get them in foul trouble, but I think we could tire them out a little bit. That, it's know. possible because they're going to fight. As soon as they get across court, they're, they're going to fight for every foot. I think they got about three guys that basically play every minute of the game. I mean, and I wouldn't want to be a guy facing our pressure every minute of the game. Without a break. Without a break here and there. I mean, with Sakai or Pascoe or Meshack. Meshack all over you. Yeah. Right. They get up in your grill, they make you work for everything. Yeah. Now, there's no just kind of yeah. casually dribbling around back there, you Th know, not. taking your time very often. Um, you know, the only real concern I have defensively for us is when the ball goes around, you know, we get 
we drop somebody down to double inside and then kick it back out. You know, we'll generally get out on that first shooter pretty quick. Yeah. But if they work it around the edge, uh, around the perimeter, they'll eventually get an open shooter. And this mm -hmm. is a team you don't want to have any open shots. Right. I, I really wonder, I'd almost, to you know, try not to maybe double down as quickly and as aggressively. Yeah, as I wouldn't either. I mean, that's, Purdue does the same thing very well. They they expect you to double uh, eating and then they'll throw it out to somebody who's deadly at three. Yeah. So, I mean, if you tell me that, hey, their center gets 25 points on us tonight, but we shut down the three-point attack, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Right. So, but getting into the next thing, we got a huge commitment. Ethan Utley, Bob, in-state guy, mm -hmm. big for that. Uh, Long-standing relationship. With Coach Garner, his mm -hmm. mama knew, yeah. has known him for years, right? And uh, a position of need, defensive tackle. I, I'll let you just start off with that, Bob, if you want to. Yeah, I mean we we've not recruited defensive tackle, you know, really well the last couple of years. So definitely at the high in, school ranks anyway. at the high school rank, yeah. And we've had to go out and get some, uh, you know, uh, transfer like Jackson Omar, Moy, Jackson Moy, Omar, Omar. Omar lot. And I expect us we'll, we'll have to get in probably one or two this coming off season uh, because we lose a lot I'll potentially almost every one of them just about almost every one of them. Bryce Neeson could come back. We'll see, but uh, my guess is he will go, and then you lose him. Uh, well, Omar Norman Lot, yeah. Elijah Williams, Big O, Big O. And then, uh, is that it? I guess that's it. But Maybe. I've got, it seemed like i got one more hit person in my head I can't think of right but, now. But um, that's, uh, that's quite a bit. We're gutted. Our defense yeah. tackle is yeah. going to be gutted next year. So you'll have, uh, if you had Eason back, that would be huge. But then you got maybe maybe Jenkins maybe slides inside. Yeah. Moy. David Hobbs. David Hobbs. I expect a him. big jump yeah. out of him, yeah. And Moy, you know. Yeah. But we're going to need more than Yeah, we need some three. defense tackle. Yeah. Yeah. So high school ranks, I'm looking at getting at least minimum three out of the high school ranks mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. With one to two portal guys. If you get yeah. the right ones, hey, if you get the right ones, you take as many deep as tackles you can get. Well, I mean, obviously Rodney Garner and Tennessee Vols here, Heupel, believe that that's a position that you need a lot of guys. Because even when we've been deep, we're getting guys. I mean, we we want a heavy rotation there. We do. And with Utley, we're getting a, a three-technique defensive lineman. Mm -hmm. And Tennessee really likes to uh, play with one large run stopper. And then one guy that can really push the uh, the interior pressure. I mm -hmm. mean, Norman Lott is a great example of that. The yeah. guy that you love, his ability to get upfield, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, Jackson Moy, I believe, is going to be the same thing. Same type. Uh, yeah. And, and that's... It seems to what we've recruited a lot. You know, Hobbs kind of that way. Yes, Hobbs uh, is too. I mean, guys could could play a defensive end if you wanted yeah. them to. Yeah, they're to that two eighty to two ninety range, yeah. two ninety five. Um, and Utley fits right in that too. He's two seventy five right now. He's got the frame, good frame though. Yeah, probably looking at uh, getting cl close to three hundred percent. And I looked at a two four seven and Valquest, um, and the riders over there, uh, the national guys. Pretty much told you the same story. This is a guy with uh, some good pass rushing ability, mm -hmm. some quickness, lateral movement, uh, exactly what you want for that smaller, quicker, three-technique guy. Yeah. So, uh, early getting a defensive tackle early on and, and staying in state, hopefully we uh, continue to do well in state. We've got to lock down three or four more guys. Mm -hmm. But – Really can't be uh, overstated, really, how much Utley meant to us. If we had not got him, that would have been rough. Yeah. Uh, let's move on, Tim, to uh, some scrimmage notes. Just, you know, there's, this thing's closed to the media, so the it's not of, been a lot. Not a lot effort. comes out from that kind of stuff. They keep that stuff kind of tight, but there was some stuff that come out from it. Uh, apparently, Nico had a pretty good day, but didn't play, you know, a you know, yeah. great portion of the game. Uh, 
Brazil had a touchdown catch. Um, Kitzelman, I think I'm, and, and that's probably one of the biggest surprises of the game of the scrimmage. Of uh, we thought that Kitzelman, the transfer from Alabama, was just simply going to be well, an emergency guy. Emergency guy. Somebody gets just hurt. Just blocks and just comes in, like you said. Somebody's gotten hurt, basically. But it looks like he actually. This guy can play. Yeah, he'll be a contributor. It seems like this year, which is a uh, a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, between him and uh, Stays and Ethan Davis, if uh, we're going to be pretty solid there. Yeah, I think so. And uh, uh, you know, I mentioned the other two, but I got to mention Mike Matthews had a, a long touchdown catch from Gaston Moore. Uh, it was a uh, very tight coverage, so. That was nice to see. Yeah, Jordan was, Matthews is. Yeah. And he was looking back for the ball. I mean, it might have slowed him up a hair. But, I mean, he was with him. He was touching him all the way down with his arm. So it wasn't like he was. And he almost touched the ball. I mean, yeah. it was a it was a dime on the pass and great coverage. That's what you want to see in those type of situations. You want to see a great pass, great offense player doing what they had to do, and the DB being basically all over them. And it was just a he, perfect. Another couple of inches, he would have batted that ball down. Yeah. About the only highlight that we get That's really got to, see we got to see yeah. of the entire scrimmage. Um, see, Bob, uh, I guess really the only other things we really heard specifics yeah. out of the scrimmage was uh, some DBs that we got. Yeah. Uh, John Slaughter, we've mentioned his name quite a bit. He broke up a deep ball pass. Uh, in the game, he got praised by Hypo for that. Um, a couple of freshmen, um, Farouk, I can't think of his first name. It's Edris. Edris, maybe. Edris, yeah. I so always the, mess it up. Well, I don't know that I got it right either. I'm pretty sure Farouk's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Farouk's not right. But he was impressive. And the guy who you're going to hear me talk about a lot, Boo Carter, the next great Defensive back at UT uh, was mentioned twice by uh, Heupel, uh, which rarely does he mention people like that. And he mentions them twice. I'm beginning to be a believer, Bob. I mean, and I'm not talking about a believer in Boo because I think he's going to be a great ball player. Yeah. But I'm beginning to be a believer about Boo this year as a freshman. Me too. I mean, I you hear you just hear some little snippets from from people that watch practice a little bit here and there. And uh, I think the guy's going to be just special, and I think he's going to play this year. And he does, considering our uh, history of not wanting to play uh, young, guy. young guys at that position. Yeah. Of course, they ain't going to have a whole lot of choice in the matter this year. They, they don't have many veterans. So maybe that plays to his advantage. But he's a, he's a playmaker, man. He, he's... He's going to be a future star. But yeah. write that name down. Well, don't write it down because you're going to hear it all the time. Yeah, you, you're not going to watch it. it. You're going to watch that one. You're going to watch You go, who, oh, man, who's this Bukhari guy? You know? Well, it's the guy that we was talking about all the time because yeah. he's going to be. I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and say he's going to be another Eric Berry type guy. I think that's how, I think that's how good he will be. Right, and not saying I'm going to say he, he's exactly like Eric. No, he's you know, not. He's going to be one of those DBs when you look back in the past, go, you know, who's your best guys down there, you know, uh, Eric Berry, Dale Carter, uh, Terry McDaniel, um, you know, and uh, those small handful of guys, you're going to mention, Boo Carter. I know we're extremely early talking about that because, I mean, the guy's not even played a game yet, but I just got a feel, I mean, right. That's sometimes the best time to, to, uh, you know, really crow about somebody because it is on the field, sometimes they don't live up to expectations. <laughs> How many superstars have I at this point in their career have I labeled superstars? I, you know, probably a third of the team. So, <laughs> so yeah, but uh, so but this time you're right. This I'm time. right. Yeah. This time I'm right. Boo Carter will be a future superstar. I don't think you're going too far out on a limb this time, Bob. Yeah. This kid's special. 
I mean, I guess I was probably going out on land when I said Davy Schuler was going to be a superstar, I guess, but. Hey, uh, I actually got a friend. I actually have a friend that still thinks Navy could be a star. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great anyway, guy, though. Great guy. Yeah. If he's if he's subscribing and watching right now, that's right. Lucky if man. not, <laughs> he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, I believe that's going to wrap it up for us today, guys. Uh, looking forward to the game tonight. Beat them Blue Jays. Let's go to the Elite Eight again. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, man. Go Vols. Go Vols.